well, what kind of a guy do I want? I don't want a guy in my life that can't do anything for me. And if you want me to be in a relationship, you need to be doing something for me. Mm. You know? So it became an exchange like now. And then this yeah. is where we are now. Like what you're saying, mm. Tino. Mm. People oh, we now we're in a place of going, look, I'll give you money. You give me sex. We're good. Yeah, we're good. That's it. You take the sex away or you take the money away. Mm. Well, thanks. That's been real. Nice to know you. I'll move on. Who else wants my money or who else wants my sex? Yeah. The motherland, the African man. Long as I'm alive, I'ma make a plan. Strong host to break, got long walks to take. Got no votes to make, but don't bet we pray. Hey, African man, yeah. The African male iris. Through the eye of an African male. Welcome to another episode of the African Male Iris. My name is Prayer Soul, and um, I'm here with the gents, and uh, I'll let everybody introduce themselves before we get into it. All right, guys. I'm DJ Tino, and thank you so much for watching our content. Yeah, uh, Slim the Panache. Ah, uh, the what, sorry? The Panache. Panache. <laughs> right. <Look it> up. <laughs> the panache. Okay, I'm going to make my comment to this slim thing. Before I do that, I uh, would like to introduce our guest for this episode. It's the one and only, our brother, Leroy Gopal Jets. Yes. Woo-hoo. Highly esteemed. Leroy, thank you for coming through to the show, bro. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Such an honor to be here. Um, I'm looking forward to spending some good time with you guys. Yes. No, no, yes. 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 So Slim's got this thing where every time we introduce ourselves, mm -hmm. he comes up with this with a new name. And he says it all makes sense. So like before the show, he goes like on Google and he, ch he I don't, searches. I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't search for anything, man. He searches for words that he thinks are cool. Like I don't. Panache. What's is that, bro? Slim Panache. Panache. Like Slim Panache. No, no, no. <laughs> Panache. Because yeah. my little brother's called Panache. You know? Panache. It's like, you know, it's like different kind of ways of mixing that up. You know, like Ash, oh, his, his. Panache, <laughs> Panache. <laughs> so, but I think it's dope though, Slim. I think yeah, that's really dope. cool. I'm, I, I'm hoping that by the end of the day, or by the end of the show rather, uh -huh. I can add one... Uh, uh, right. I hope I can come up with something for right. you. Bro, don't, yeah. don't get yeah. yourself no, he, into this. So, so Leroy man, gets it. Bro. Leroy I get it. Leroy is <laughs> <Leroy's laughs> the only person who's come on the show. He gets it. He gets it. <laughs> I get it, bro. But yeah. the time we leave, I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to have like yeah. slim something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you with something. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. So um, I think we're definitely in for like, you know, a really dope episode. So Leroy, I just want us to talk about like, your your career yeah the stuff you've done i mean bro like i thought i knew some of the stuff you've done but there's like a lot so i'm just gonna read because <laughs> i was like what yeah <laughs> so um, um the first thing i didn't know was that you were trained i actually just assumed you were like you know raw talent or whatever yeah. but because that's the vibe i got from your first production and the first thing that i watched from you was obviously yellow card yellow yes. card yeah, yeah, yeah yellow card was like crazy <laughs> was, bro yeah. like, oh, like, like was leroy was proper talk. superstar yeah. vibes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Uh, so leroy is actually a dad um he's a husband he's a father he's a creative director and he runs an agency called uh just Talent. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. That and that's a uh, voiceover training and you also do voiceover work. Yeah, that's for, correct. Yeah. So do you work with like ad agencies or do you just anybody can just So sort of... I'm I mostly work with the voices themselves. Right. Um, okay. So I'm very much into like training the voices. Um uh people call me like the voice therapist. <laughs> like, oh, right. You know, discovering the voice or even tweaking your voice towards a particular performance. Okay. Not just only for voiceovers, but also for voice acting. And that's like, that's really dope for, for acting actually, because yeah, that sort of sets the tone for, for everything. Yeah, absolutely. Because voice is quite a big, uh, it's a very big part of performance. Um, I think me, it, people even take it for granted. Right. Uh, you'll find like a lot of people who work on their out physical outlook, mm. you know, how they mm. look physically, but nobody actually invests in how they sound much they can do with mm. their voice and how they sound. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. I feel like Tino's like, he's not using his voice. Like he's got a really deep voice, but he just, I don't feel like he's, he's, he's sitting on money. He's a gentle giant. Yeah. Gentle <laughs> giant. So, so he's got to yeah. maintain the gentle yeah. giant. Oh, the gentle giant vibe. With, with what, what, the voice. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you think I should do with my voice, Tony? What I can think, I do with my voice? I re, you know, I think like Tino could be like one of those like, like very interesting like bank or whiskey ad kind of voice. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it could be like, uh, you know, get 
get the new Slim Panache whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Tino could be your voice for your whiskey, brother. All right, Slim all right, Panache right. 42. Yeah. You know? That's that's all I'm gonna leave with you. <laughs> Yeah. Turn your name into a whiskey brand. <laughs> <laughs> that is dope. That's a good and one. And as you can see, you know, Lira is Lira is such an entertainer. Yeah. Which is why he's like a creative director for um, for a couple of projects that he's working on. So, yeah. um, do you want to talk us through like some of the current projects that you're working on? Uh, well, the ones that you can talk about. Yeah. Uh, and just give a give give us a sort of like a snapshot of what's going on with Leroy now. So we're really in a very interesting time in terms of entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's a very collaborative time. It's a collaboration time. Right. Um, and you know you've got to maximize that particular sort of like wind in the sail at that particular time. Right. Um, and so what we did is we came together as some interesting Zimbabwean creatives living in Johannesburg. Right. Um, and we decided to sort of like whatever we can feed into to make a particular project grow, that's what we're going to do. Okay. So I may not be the leading person on it. I may not be the lead producer on it. Okay. But I'll come with what I know and what I'm very capable of and go, listen, I can feed this part of my expertise into your project so that it can shine and it can flourish. And I think that's sort of like really that's the time dope, that, we, yeah. that we're in now. So um, I find myself wearing a, the creative director hat a lot. I'm part of uh, Monzi Ice Creations okay, uh, with executive producer Mona Lisa Chisango as well mm -hmm. as um, Enoch Chihombori, who's also one of our head writers. Um, and a host of other interesting, like really great Zimbabwean mm -hmm. creatives that actually... Uh, that actually come on board to, you know, to just feed into all of that. That is nice. um, So we're working on some really interesting stuff from TV shows, talk shows, cooking shows, films, uh, comedy shows coming up soon, you know. Nice. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of like really what I'm, I'm working on that I'm busy with. Pretty dope, man. So um, I actually wanted to just sort of do the quick rundown of some of the stuff that <laughs> I didn't know, um, which is... Um, Prior to this role, uh, this role is where you played, um, this role meaning yellow card. Yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, prior to this role, uh, Leroy appeared in two Christian films about teenage lifestyles, which oh, is yeah. Adventure Unlimited and Choose, Choose Freedom. Freedom. Mm -hmm. And then other films Leroy has acted in include Siren's Feast, um, Scared Instinct, Four Days, Through the Flight of a Feather, Night Drive, The Wall, Surprise, and Kite, starring Samuel L. Jackson. Wow. Aside from his breakout role on One Way, he has acted in numerous uh, other television series, including the ETV Soapy, Backstage, the SABC One drama series, Home Affairs, the SABC Three medical drama, Josie H., the SABC Two youth drama series, Olampinchi, and the SABC One Soapy Generations in the role of Jackson Gorgeous. I mean, there's still way more. Yeah. But like for me, bro, that's like very impressive. And I guess as a creative, I'd like to know how that journey has been with relation to being a husband, being a father and how that, because those two worlds are like completely different. Absolutely. And yeah. people always seem to assume you are Leroy, you are this character or you are this. So, you know, there's always like this, I always find myself in this conflict where who I am at home, like I'm very chilled at home. I'm actually very, I can be very quiet at home. And yeah. that is a very difficult thing for people to wrap their heads around. Because like, what? Quiet. <laughs> but I need downtime. I just need to also like reset. So I want to know how that's been like for you. Um, it's been quite an interesting journey. Um, my eldest uh, child, my son, is 17 years old. Wow, bro. Nice. Um, and then I've got two girls. That's that's Kiahile. And then I've got two girls, uh, Didentle and Untatile. They are uh, one's 13, turning 13, sure. and the next turning 11. Teenagers. Wow. Teenagers in the house. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I got big people in my house. Right. right. Uh, but, you know, I can say over the last 17 years of having children in my life, and trying to balance that with entertainment and also, you know, uh, my wife as well, um, my marriage rather, trying to really balance all of that. It hasn't been easy because it took right. a lot of, quite a, quite a lot of sacrifice. Um, initially, you know, I think uh, my plan wasn't really thinking to myself, I'm going to stay in South Africa. <laughs> right. <laughs> I really thought I was just coming here to study and then I'm going to, I'm going to leave, out. you know. Yeah. Uh, but my life took a bit of a turn when I, when I met my girlfriend, my wife, well, my wife now, my girlfriend then, you know, it took a bit of a turn and uh, we had children. 
Um, even now when we reflect on it, sometimes we're like, damn. Sometimes it feels like life just went by us. Mm. Yes. Uh, you know, like we had yeah. kids. Because even when we were talking then when we were young, you know, we had dreams with aspirations and things that we wanted to do. Right. Um, I had to really think, uh, find a, a good balance through sacrifice. Uh, so it was non-negotiable, the things that I had to do in terms of if I had to make sure that I need to be there for my family. You know, um, at most, way, if I had to travel, I'd always try and find out if I can travel with my family. I would request that I need to travel with my family. So even if it, was just, even if it wasn't mainly acting work, if it was okay. other work that I was doing, if I was emceeing something, I always tell my clients, listen, if you need me to emcee out of town and I'm out of town for five days, I come with this other package. <laughs> Can you right. accommodate that's these good, people too, good. you know? Yeah. Right. So it helped in doing that, that I had quite like really great relationships with clients or, you know, with business partners. So I'd always wanted to keep my family close to me. And I think that's what helped me being a great dad or being a supportive husband, if I can put it that way, is that I, I always try to stay close with my, with my family. So I took my son with me. I remember when I used to MC in the casinos, I'd take my son with, I'd leave him at like the casino crash or the kids, <laughs> <laughs> kids right, playground, right, yeah. sign him in for four hours, go do what I need to do. And I'll take him with, you know, and I need to go do voiceovers. I'll take him with. Yeah. I remember walking into a studio once and I carry my son in right. a little baby carrier. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and to this date, even now, if you come to Just Tell It, you will find that most of the time if I'm there, my kids are there. Okay. You know, so I take them with, uh, I try to give them the experience of the entertainment industry as well. But not only from the experience, but indirectly, I'm keeping them close to me. Close to just so that I get a chance to be their dad, their friend, right. without feeling as though my work is taking me away from mm. them. That's so great. I think the effort question. that I put into that is just to making mm. sure that everybody nice, stays close nice, with me. Nice. Same thing with my wife, you know. I've got a question, Leroy. Do any of your kids show um, any interest um, towards like the entertainment industry? Or is it like one of those, <laughs> they've seen too much and they want nothing to do? It's a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> right. My son, I think, has, you know, because he's of age and I think he understands what's cutting in. Um, he's into voiceovers, but he's not into, uh, he doesn't want to be in front of the camera. Yeah. He doesn't want to do the acting stuff. Uh, my girls are very much, um, they love the, the glitz of it. Uh, mm -hmm. They love the... They love the fun stuff. Yeah. If I have to do a red cop and I'm like, girls, let's go do it, they're gonna be like, yes. Dress up. Let's do it. <laughs> right. yeah. okay. We have to go to a show and they have to show up and yeah. we gotta do something. They love that, you know? And then my youngest, uh, Naima, she's really got, I think she's got the bug. She's done uh, a couple of commercials. Um, uh, you know, when I train actors at home, I always let them sit in anyway. I've never really sort of like pushed them and gone, guys come check out this acting stuff, come try it out, you know. Mm. I've indirectly now and again sort of like, you know, planted a seed and like, hey, look, did you know that if you do a commercial, you can shoot for three days and get paid 50,000 bucks? <laughs> like, 50 what? <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so I think indirectly in that way, I've sort of like put a little bit of a, you know, seed in them. But I've never really sort of like gone, listen, come and do this. Um, I'm a bit caught up with the 50-50, to be honest, because at the same time, there is nothing better than I know than performance. And what we should do is empower our kids and give them the best of what we have of ourselves. Okay. Uh, that's you know, true. So if, I'm a, if I was a financially successful person in terms of I own a bank, mm -hmm. uh, to put it in that conte uh, context, I'd definitely be teaching my son how to run a bank. Of yeah. course. And yeah. he'd surely be like, yeah, I'm the next big banker. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but now because it's entertainment, everybody always goes like, oh, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe, you know. Uh -huh. but, but I really think uh, we should. And I try my best to sort of like do it in a way where, you know, it, it's not forceful, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, but give them that option to say, well, dad, thanks very much for this skill, but I'm all right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I think that's a pretty decent mm -hmm. approach because mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think a lot of, a lot of people always assume uh, a lot when they're raising kids. So they always kind of just assume that they should do this or they shouldn't. Yeah. Michael or... Jordan's kids don't play ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, None we don't even know. None of them. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, and it's different because yeah. then LeBron's son yeah. is on fire right now. Both of them. You know what Both I mean? So, yeah. yeah. So you, it's, it's really 50-50. 50-50. Yeah. And I think, sure. yeah, I think sure. that's dope. Yeah. So Tino's got a topic that we're going to get into. Um, and uh, Tino, you can take it away, bro. 
Yeah, man. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, thank I find you. This interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> so, so first of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been uh, watching our content and sing it, sending in comments. Uh, we're seeing all of that and the views and the likes. We appreciate that so much. Uh, please like and subscribe us um, yeah. on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. We're trying to be in, on all platforms, Spotify. We've got a WhatsApp yeah. channel as well. Right? Yeah, yeah. We oh, actually yeah. recently opened yeah. up yes. a WhatsApp channel. So if you're not really on the social media platforms, you can actually follow us on WhatsApp. We'll be also sending updates there on our, about our content, sending in clips of from the episodes that we're doing as well. So you're welcome to... Um, I think we'll, we will put the number and everything on the screen as well for yeah. you guys to, to, to just uh, note that. So um, some of the topics I think that... Um, um, most of you um, um, give us as feedback on us to discuss. Um, one was brought in, brought up by an old old high school friend of uh, myself and Slim. Actually, You're right. His name is Wendo. So he talked about uh, this whole fifty fifty in, in in relationships, and I think we know when when you talk of fifty fifty, usually res, uh, resorts to to finances, right? finances, the bills. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. a, it's a major talking point now about um, um, in men being providers and protectors. Prov that provision, yeah. are we still looking at it from a? Is it still practical to look at it from a man creating all the all the provision? Because times, we, change, we you know, have times have changed, Dave. You know, times have changed. Empowered, you know, the equal rights. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the 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 honest truth now is if you are. If you are Leroy, the consultant, and there's an, there's a, a, also a woman who's applying for the same job, due to that equality, of course, usually they will take up the woman, and that's how it is now, right? Yeah. And yeah, like so, a lot of so, companies have policies where yes, they say the there's a certain percentage that has to be female. Exactly. So for me, it's a little twisted because it's like they just have to be a woman, almost like maybe the qualification doesn't even matter because I mean, what if there's just one chick who's applied and then she's not great and then you still have to take them because the policy is now saying we need to, you know, yeah. it's, it's a tricky one. Yeah. So, but that, yeah, just putting that, just taking that into perspective now to say it, it's now, you know, it's now not guaranteed for a man to have a job and sustain it for a long period of time. Now, yeah. You know, as it was back in the day. Right. So that then comes back to this discussion of the 50-50 uh, concept. And or 100 zero. Or 100 zero, whatever. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 60 you know. So, <laughs> so, so Wendell just brought up a few points that I thought we, 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 we should uh, look into. Right. Right? So he said, because um, right now he's still, he's still dating, he's still single, so... He comes across the across these things when he's dating and uh, the right. people he's dating, so he he believes that um, this is how the split should be. Well, he gave three um, different scenarios. Scenarios exactly. So number one, he said you put all your money in a pot and use that for your household expenses, investments, and savings, and uh, each one can then receive an allowance from the pot and do with it uh, what they please. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you guys think about... Uh, it sounds very fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That is very yeah. fairy tale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or requires a lot of discipline. Oh, yeah. Discipline, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's tricky because, um, I mean, in a marriage setup, you're not going to get to... I mean, you really get to disciplined individuals. Yeah. Mm. You know, there's always going to be by chance or however, but it's almost always the case where there's one who's the spender and there's one who's just more disciplined. Mm -hmm. And then you need to be able to have a level of, of communication and, and comfort to be able to say, you're not, I'm the spender. Or to call out your partner and say, you're the spender, I'm the one who holds. So let's you know strike a balance. Mm -hmm. And I think that is where it gets tricky because now it's a power, power dynamic in the case where the husband is the spender and the wife knows how to save money and she knows how to manage finances. Mm -hmm. And then um, the husband's owner is bringing in more money. Like, how are you going to manage that? Because yeah. 
this guy is is like a problem to himself and to the family because he's just going to spend the money carelessly. Mm. Yes, he's bringing in a lot of it, but if he's spending it carelessly and then the wife knows how to manage, but then if he's got this power ego thing, it's just going to go left because how are you going to get better? So I think that regardless of whatever situation or scenario people decide I think handling finances is almost like handling communication in okay. a relationship. Okay. The two of you have the responsibility to decide how this boat rides. Okay. So if you're going to be like, you know what? Um, uh, I, I get money every month on this specific day and it's this specific amount, without a doubt. But maybe the other one is a consultant. So they they get what they kill. So it's like, when they score big, they'll get paid big. But they'll get paid big maybe three times in a year or four times in a year. Mm -hmm. And then the other months, you know, it's, it's not shaky. the same. Yeah, it's shaky. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Yeah. So that's where it's, it's almost like you can never really put a blanket situation mm. on anybody and everybody. But you can just sort of go to the, um, the basics of we need to understand what at least understand what our monthly expenses are, the ones that are fixed and will not change, and then have a solution for that. And then anything that goes beyond that, that stuff that we then can, you know, sit down and decide, okay, this is the money we're starting to put aside. Let's save up for a holiday. Because you also want to have a balance. Like early early days, because I've been married, I'm actually going to be married for 10 years this year. Can you believe wow, it? Can you believe it? Congratulations. Can you believe it? Yes. Yes. That's a big yes. milestone. That's you know, right. and... Um, and in, in our early years of marriage, I used to always think about investing because I'm such an entrepreneur, creative. So you're always like excited by, about the new idea, this new thing, this new opportunity. So I would always like want to channel all of the money towards some project. Mm -hmm. And then my wife is more of a, um, if we can have amazing experiences, that makes me happy. Okay. So when did the putting a stash on the side get introduced <laughs> in the marriage. <laughs> when, when, when we started having the fights, because she's like, yeah, but then, you know, you you did this and you put the money into this project and then that thing didn't work out and then we worked on another thing and then that thing kind of worked out, but then, you know, then it sort of fizzles, fizzles out uh, on the way. So then I, re I then, because she then spoke up about it, mm. I then realized I actually don't have a natural balance of being able to slow down sometimes and just be like, Sometimes we can just save up and actually just go to Durban yeah. for like the weekend that's good. That's good. And, and just chill out and then come back we're, and then we're yeah. just, we're broke. We've just got enough of groceries and we're like, you know what, that's yeah, fine. Because then we had such a experience. blast in Durban. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We actually yeah. covered some of the point, uh, some of his uh, uh, point for a number, the point, second point. Right. Where he said you put money in a pot uh, in proportion to your earnings. Say both of, both put 50% of your earnings. So that means whatever you earn, you, both of you are putting 50%. I don't know if that's practical. 50% of your earnings um, in the common pot, then you use that amount for household expenses, savings. I guess it also depends. Is Wendell you married? Know. You said he's not married. He's, he's not, not married. married. Oh, he's not married. I can <laughs> tell, bro. Yeah. You know that's what? what I, I, feel like please please I feel like... I feel like prayer's answer was very wholesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you pretty much just laid out what it is like in right. a marriage. You know, all yeah. these other scenarios are a little yeah. bit... Um, um, hey guy, he doesn't yeah. he doesn't know, bro. He's, because yeah. you know what? That's the, what I was saying. It's the honest truth is, know. it's like you know, if you come, you, you see finances. I think if you look at like finance, communication, sex, children, yeah. those all things. those things, those are sort of like your uh, fixed things in marriage. If yeah. you can put it that way, okay. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But those fixed things can't be. You can't. Sort of like mend or, or sort them out with a blanket or universal yeah, answer. Yeah, how to deal with them. You know, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if we take communication, for example, what may work for me in my relationship, um, and I can advise you and tell you, hey, your prayer, go use, they try communicating like this. Yeah. You're going to get home and your wife's going to be like, who are you talking to like that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. And exactly. it doesn't work. Yeah. So I think there's certain things that you got to design for your relationship to make sure that it makes it grow or you can go forward with it. Yeah. You know, uh, because for me, even if I look into, into my marriage, you know, financially, I'm not, uh, please don't put me in charge of the finance. 
I've been put in charge of finance once and messed it up. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and I think that self yeah. that level of self awareness is exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly what's important because yeah. when you know and you've 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 given a shot, you're you're okay with saying I'm not I'm the guy gl- for that. I'm glad to go like, hey baby, he there go. Is, yeah, manage I, it I don't want to manage this stuff. Please, can you manage this stuff? Yeah. yeah. Wherever you need me to help you in terms of managing this stuff. You let me know. I can take your lead on this one. Yeah. Won't make me less of a man. Won't make me as though like, oh, I'm, I'm a wussy kind of a guy. Yeah, no. Yeah. I know what my strengths are and what my weaknesses are. And I've had to learn that through a bad experience. Right, you, right. Be, you know what I mean? And I'm not trying to repeat that. So I'd rather go, okay, cool. That's not my forte. That's not my strength. Exactly. And I'll run with that. You know? But I understand why Wendell said that. Yeah. Because he's not married he's not and he's yet, still yeah. dating. Mm. So when you're still yeah. dating, especially now, like based on what all, all of my single friends, when they share their experiences, bro, it's, it's rough for these niggas, man. <laughs> it's rough. Yeah, like we're, pray, we're praying for you niggas, bro. It's, it's really rough for them, man. We're praying for you guys because you know what? <laughs> you're you're going to meet a lot of chicks who will sort of just do a quick profile because they want to know how much money you make yeah, yeah. and they'll check the car you're driving and they'll be like, oh, okay, so what does he do? And then they know, oh, this guy's got bag, right? Mm. Yeah. Then they play nice and they play wife. And then later on he realizes, oh, we're same. not really gelling. We're not really like a good fit. Then he's out. Mm. And then he realizes this chick was actually only here for the money. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's why he would say, uh, okay, everybody comes in. Okay, let's just put a pot here and then 50 50, and then we kind of see how like it goes. Because you're not really yeah. trusting yeah, yeah, this yeah, person. Yeah. So you want to keep yeah. your 50 just in case, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. But if you're, you're, um, if you're in love with someone and you, you know you're building together and you trust this person with your life and you trust them that you know, they care enough about me that we are doing this, we're actually in this together, mm-hmm. you're not going to be afraid to just say, Here's the money. And I think, like, I remember yeah. 50 Cent. I remember watching an interview where 50 Cent was talking about his grandfather. And he said, my grandfather used to manage my grandmother's expectations. Mm. So he never said, he never said, I don't have money. Mm. He never said, I can't afford it. He would just bring his wages. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. And then he would give her. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And then say, one. pay for what needs to be paid for. Yeah. And then you can give me money for drinks. Yeah. So she would then know that this is how much we this have. Is it. We have. Yeah. So she yeah. would have the sense to now know that, okay, we can do this, we can do this, we can do that, we can do that. We can't afford this, so we can't afford that. So she never had any expectations that go that far. And I feel like um, the dating world now is just a little more tricky because, you know, women, like, like, like what um, uh, I think Slim said that earlier, where you're like, you know, women are just more independent now yeah. and they also have opportunities. So they're a bit more, uh, what do you bring to the table? Can you actually take care of me? Can you, yeah. or, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's more vocal like than what it used to be yeah. when we were like still single Younger. and dating yeah. and whatever. And because of that, I feel like there's just more pressure on, on guys to be like, Oh, there is a lot of, yeah. you know, I need it. to, yeah, I need to, okay, let me, maybe let me just, uh, and then, you know, am I going to pay? Okay, let me pay the bill because if I don't, then it's going to look a certain way. You know, or I have to get her this, I have to get her that to prove that I can take care of her. But then I feel like sometimes it leads, you sort of lead with the wrong thing and then you don't really get to know me. You just get to know that I can pay for what you need. And then when a girl sees that, then she's just like, okay, let's just go with it. She don't know what you're like when you're mad. Exactly. She when you're mad, you broke, yeah. pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Can you see the voice acting? Now yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah, you see right? <laughs> the dramatic effect. Bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and then, and on, when I think one thing I heard, uh, I'm sure you guys know of Dr. Uma Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shh, I guys, watched him. This guy is just so intense. He's bro. Hectic, yeah. <laughs> I watched him on this uh, podcast called uh, Hardly Initiated. It's a team of two guys, single guys right. from America, and yeah. they hosted him. Yeah. And he was talking about uh, dating and relationships. Mm-hmm. The one, the one part that he said that really, I was just like, wow, was we're having too many pleasure contracts that are being mistaken for relationships. Yeah. Ish mm. or so pleasure uh, contract. Yeah. yeah, so oh. it's like a, it's like a money in exchange for sex. For sex, yeah, pretty much. Then we are 
putting that as or seeing that as a relationship. Yeah. But one when one of the one of the two is missing from that contract breaks is done. down. Yeah. Do you think Pretty that's much. because a lot of women have actually given up on like love? No, I I do you know what I, lot, think? I feel like a lot of women um will gladly do like I've heard of a lot of women who are just like, yeah, I mean, I don't care. I don't care about what the guy is like, as long as you can take care of me. Like, especially at a certain age. It's just I've, like, heard, I've heard men say that too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. There's men who want to be in place. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So that's man. like, for me, Ooh. I don't know. Is it is it like a decay in believing in you can actually be in a happy marriage and be in love with someone and actually live happy? You know, um, I'll say this prayer. Um, I feel like I've lived through some interesting generations when it comes to relationships. You right, know? right. Um, I've been through in a time where you're in a relationship with somebody because, which I, I think is a great foundation for any relationship, mm -hmm. if you want it to grow or if, it's gonna, if you're thinking long term. Right. Where you meet someone and you can see sort of like, you can see what better and upgrading you're doing in their lives. Mm. Not monetary-wise right. only. It's not like I'm just going, hey, uh, now that we're together, get rid of them jeans, put on a dress, here's yeah. the money, and I'm upgrading yeah. you like that. No. Right, right, right. Where, uh, let's say, maybe we meet. I go to church. You don't. And I'm like, hey, maybe I should introduce you to church. And we go to church. And then she starts saying that, wow, actually church is doing me some good. Mm. There's things I've learned, and I'm, it's bettering my character as a person, Right. I still drink. And she's like, hey, we go to church. Stop drinking. I stop drinking. I'm like, oh, wow. Actually, this is great. Yeah. So you see, there's some betterment and improvement within the relationship because right. we're building together because we've got a common goal. Right. So um, I've been through, I think, a time where, which I think is the great foundation between my wife and I as we identified that between me and Keleto to say, let's build one another and let's build together. You know, And in that building, you are going to come across challenges. You're going to come a point where hey, the cement is not enough. seems a little bit more than the sand. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, right. and things are a little bit shaky. Right, yeah. right, You right. know, some bricks are not put in properly. And now this, this wall is looking a little bit skewed. Yeah. And then you have to take those bricks down and then you rebuild again, you know? Yeah. So if you get the analogy. Mm -hmm. So you got to have a... So there's relationships that are like that. Then there's people who I think there's a... Relationships went through a moment or changed or evolved through a moment of going, look, whatever you want, be with me. I'll get, every, I'll, get, I'll get everything, I'll get everything for, you. for you. 100 percent like zero yeah. to 100, you were saying. Mm, yes. Yeah. Right? Be with me, I'll get everything for you. I don't have to do nothing. You, you can be a happy housewife. You, you know what I mean? And there's people where it works for them, where the wife feels like, I ain't doing nothing. And I'm happy with that. My husband yeah. will give me everything I need. Whatever I want, I can ask from him. And sometimes we then see people having that relationship. Your one is working where you're building together. But it just takes a little bit longer to get to the promised land because you both having to work quite hard in doing this. Whereas it's different if it's just one person and you're going, look, ah, don't worry, I'm bringing all the cheese. It's looking glamorous for them. This lady meets this lady and goes, wow, look at you. You living yeah. the life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't got to do a damn thing. thing. Exactly. Now I got to build it. this guy. I got to build it. This guy. Yeah. I gotta, you know what I mean? And then it evolved into going well. What kind of a guy do I want? I don't want a guy in my life that can't do anything for me. And if you want me to be in a relationship, you need to be doing something for me. Mm. You know? So it became an exchange like now. And then this yeah. is where we are now. Like what you're mm. saying, Tino. Mm. People always, now we're in a place of going, look, I'll give you money. You give me sex. We're good. Yeah, we're good. That's it. You take the sex away or you take the money away. Mm. Well, thanks. That's been real. Nice to know you. I'll move on. Who else wants my money or who else wants my sex? Yeah. Right. You know? So you know, people that's, that's, lost a sense of believing and actually going, yeah, I, I love that, you. I that's, really believe that. Too. I love that's you. What yeah. I wanted we can to say. build a relationship um, together. I wanted to say that uh, there's, a, there's a certain narrative that's being pushed down um, on people these days. It's the women should live a glamorous life versus, um, well, not versus, but live a glamorous life um, mm -hmm. no matter how you manage to do it. Oh, and then and then you know it like brings up certain uh, things that we saw as taboo in previous years, like your OnlyFans, mm -hmm. like your you meet a dude, you tell him, you literally tell him, if you wanna be with me, 
in bed, CDB 10K mm. kind of situation. So, yeah. so, so it's that, I feel like it's that um, glamorous life narrative that's being pushed out, obviously through social media, through... By any means. You know how it is. By, mm. by any, any means, means necessary. necessary. Mm. <laughs> Women want to be um, on a yacht in Dubai shaking their thing, right? Yeah. Um, but at what cost? In a thong. Right. In a thong. <laughs> at what Gold. cost? Gold. Do you want something? Yep. Uh-huh. And, and then on the other side of things, um, men are like, well, if I want to be with her and she wants money for it, then, you know. I'll pay. Might as well pay for it. Exactly. Get, money ain't a thing. And then move on to the next thing. Yeah. Because it's now just that simple and very transactional. That's why the concept of love is slowly fading away, especially for like people that are still dating um, nowadays. It's not only for people that are dating, bro. The concept of love is even dying in marriages. Mm. I can tell you that. True story. Like you'll True find story. a husband who is, um, is trying as much as he can. He is, in fact, he almost most probably make bad decisions just so he's trying to make sure that yeah. I can just provide that paper, that extra paper that my wife wants, oh, yeah. uh, just so that she can be happy or you won't go find, you know, the next guy who's got money. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, uh, and, it's, and it's, it's vice versa too. You know, I, I mean, like, we laughed about it earlier on, but it's true. You know, uh, there's guys who are getting into relationship with women, just, you know, give me money. money oh, yeah. I'll give yeah. you whatever sex you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? But look after me. Yeah. You know, exactly. as a guy. It's funny. I was uh, I was talking to someone and they said to me, um, there are men that are paying rent to be <laughs> with a woman. Like literally, you are hiring out a woman for the period of your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> the girlfriend allowance. And the, and the, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If there's bro. no money, she's gone. She's gone. Yeah. That's yeah. where I'm coming from. Yeah. So yeah. like every month, like you know you're paying rent. prostitution. <laughs> it is. Oh, exactly. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> No, I mean, it, ab- it absolutely I'm, is. I'm, I'm gonna rent you yeah. for about six months. I pay all pay. your bills. Uh-huh. I pay your car. I buy uh-huh. your clothes. Everything. You stay uh-huh. in this flat. I got the key to this place. I come here anytime I want to. Yeah. And, and when I need you to lay it down, yeah. down please make down. sure that yeah. the answer is not no. Yeah. 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 And she's like, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. And six months comes up, and you're done paying. And you're like, look, it's done. We're done. It's yeah. done. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. You're nice done. It's. You know what I mean? It's as good yeah, as going. I mean, hey, what's up? How much for two hours? <laughs> yeah. I would so love, I would love to thing. hear from yeah, our yeah, guests. Yeah. I would love to hear mm. from you guys. I want to know how many people um, who are watching this who are single who believe in love. Like, I really just want to nice know. That's a question. Yeah. <laughs> I really like want to know if people still... There's a song. There's a song, right? Do you believe in love? Yeah. I I really want to know if people still believe in love because I feel like it's definitely like just slowly decaying. Like I've got another question as well Uh on top of that one. What's your concept of love? Because, you know, um, the love that you probably experienced when you were much younger. Right. When you met your wife and then you're like, this is the woman that I want to spend the rest of my life with. Is it... Like the love that's there nowadays is a different kind of love. <laughs> it's a someone gets fulfilled in terms of love by what they get from the other person. Right. So they genuinely feel like I'm being loved because I'm receiving all of these things from that person. Right. To get where I'm coming from. And right. then a guy will probably genuinely feel loved because, you know, um, apart from the fact that he's probably paying a little bit of uh, some money for it, but when she gives it to me, that's that's love. where I get the feeling. Where I'm coming from, yeah. Well, Lira, so, you could go first. I mean, you're yeah. the guest. I'll, I'll go first. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so kind of you. <laughs> um, for me, I believe that you know, um, I'm a Christian, yeah. so I really like to go with what the Bible says because I think it's correct. I believe it's correct. You know, love is gentle. Love is kind. Love is patient. Uh, love is faithful. You know, for me, I think those are the basics of love. If you, for me, if you ask me, like, what is, what is it to love somebody? It's to unconditionally be willing to meet somebody at their point of their needs. You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's willing to, to find yourself being patient at a point where I don't have the patience right now. You know, but you can search down deep, side, deep, deep down inside of you and say, you know, I really do love this person. I am going to be patient. I am going to be waiting. You know, I am going to be kind. Uh, because I love you. Um, in the same token, love is also honesty. You know, love, when you love somebody, you got to be able to be honest and say, look, uh, actually, I'm only capable of this much. 
I can't do all of this other stuff for you, you know. Um, and the reason why I set that on its own in terms of honesty is because I've seen that in my own relationship where uh, where I fail to be honest, it's actually brought quite a lot of pain and a lot of destruction to the relationship right, right, just right. because of a lack of honesty. And not even a lack of honesty in terms of always being like a negative thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have been honest enough to say, look, actually, I don't have enough money to actually pay for this meal here that you want us to go on. So if you can give me an like, like, extra 200 bucks, I'll be all right. You know what I mean? But instead, I'll mess up the budget oh, yeah. and Ooh. just add Ooh. that money to this Ooh. just because, you know, I'm not being honest enough with right, that, you right. know? And it just took away a lot, you know? So I really believe that with those facets, if you understand and if you believe those facets and there are things that, are, that you're willing to practice in your life, then I think you can experience a really good love. Yeah. You know, and that's what love is about. And I think pretty much quite a bit of what marriage is about too is what I've said, you know. I want to know what yeah. Tino's take is on this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because <laughs> he always... <laughs> Tino, Tino just gave me the look like, Tino bro, looks like, bro. Like, Tino, Tino's, 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 Tino's like, bro, I wasn't Tino's ready for that. Tino's like, yeah. what did you we'll give me? We'll be back after this break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After these commercial misses. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go to commercial now. Right. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you a question again. <laughs> uh, what's what's your concept of love? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, better yet. Yeah. The love that you felt for your wife when you met has it evolved? Is it still the same? Is it based on the same principles? After obviously describing what you feel. No, hundred hundred percent. For me, it's unconditional. Definitely, um, I just think um, just being there for someone, you know, um, meeting their every need, right? Mm -hmm. That's unconditional for me. And it has to be both ways, you know. When you feel it both ways, like you're not the only one who's just giving and giving. You are also receiving then you are also wholesome and you feel complete and there are no issues. I think probably that's what's missing and currently now that love is not reciprocated. Love is Someone not trending. is loving more than they love are Love is being. definitely not trending. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> definitely yeah. not trending. Yeah. People are loving more than they are being loved. And I think that's where issues start to emanate and you have all these uh, issues going on. But for me, it's just unconditional, man. And... My wife and I, we've, I think we've been fortunate. Uh, prayer has always been saying, you know, you, where you mentioned that when you talk about marriage, you need to talk about the, you know, the bad parts of the marriage. The unhappy, yeah, yeah, yeah. The unhappy parts. But yeah. I kid you not, I, I, will, I literally have to think to points where my wife and I have actually had a fallout or an that's argument. Admirable, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really I'm, I'm serious. I think w I was just blessed and lucky to just find that person for me. And um, yeah, my wife is Zambian. Eh? I met her in Zambia. And, and, and I think the other thing that helped me was I felt like it was my decision, right? When I was in Zim, you know, everybody's kind of influencing, you know, that kind of influence. Oh, oh, yeah, this yeah, person, yeah. date oh, this yeah, person, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. There I was on my own. The, my f the first time I was on my own, making my own decisions. And I chose her. And we just had an awesome dating experience on our own. <laughs> right. <laughs> Without God. anyone. God. So at the time when I even came home and said, I found someone, you know, I was now 100% sure. And you no know what? Um, yeah. Wow. I, I, I like that because um, I feel like um, Slim's question is very important because a lot of people don't actually know what they want and what would make them happy. Yeah. That comes with, firstly, a level of self awareness as an individual. Like knowing that. I have to be at peace with myself because 
I am like this, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like that's why Victor's episode was so dope for me because yeah. he was just a guy who was just honest about yeah. everything that was going yeah. on in his life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he was able to just own it and say, See, I have a problem with this, I have a problem with women. Like, yeah. he just yeah, said yeah, it, bro. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I have a problem up. with me. Uh -huh. I'm probably just always talking to two women at the same time, like any time in my life. And I can't be alone. And that's my thing. Mm. And I, I, I feel like I, I can never be alone. Mm. Mm. So him being able to be that honest means whenever he meets with anyone, he's going to just lead with that. And then if you want to actually then work on being with that person, you know what you're signing up for. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is such a big part of mm -hmm. finding happiness. So my concept of love is actually more of being able to be self-aware first. Mm -hmm. Then being able to give that person that you are now aware of mm -hmm. to somebody Someone else. else. Okay. Because great. sometimes you're not at peace with your weaknesses so you're going to gaslight the next yeah. person and yeah. then blame them, yeah. you know, and then make it seem like it's their problem, their problem. And it's their fault, but it's really not. You just haven't had time to accept who you are. So I feel like that is like such a big, big problem. But I think love is kind from the mm -hmm. Bible is mm -hmm. probably the thing I've noticed to be the most honest about the most important um, facet of love. Okay. Because... Um, when you find someone, like whenever I talk to um, my single friends, be it male or female or work colleagues or whatever, or just artists that I work with or whatever, and they're just saying, ah, oh, you know, this is what happened in my relationship, so it ended, and then this is what happened, and whatever, whatever, whatever. And they just, you know, I always say, whatever you do, find someone who's kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I always explain that when you find someone who's kind, they're going to be kind enough to be patient with you mm -hmm. because they're just kind. They're a kind yeah. person. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be spiteful. They're not yeah. going to be mean yeah. when yeah. they're angry. Yeah. They're not going to blame you yeah. Yeah. when they know that they probably contributed to the way things are. The they're going to be kind enough. You know, the peace of mind you have when, when your partner, um, you know, disagrees with you, but you know it's coming from, you know a, it's kind coming from a good place. Exactly, <laughs> bro. You, you know it doesn't know what? mean... When, uh, when you're with someone who's <clears throat> kind <clears throat> and they say... Mm, I don't think that's a good idea. Mm. You know, it's coming from... A, You're not going to feel place. negative. That's not the first thing that comes in. True. You're going to feel concerned. You're going to feel like someone else is concerned for me. And there might be something I'm not seeing True. that they're seeing. So you want to hear what they're going to say. 100%. But that only comes from when you feel the kindness. Yeah. So I feel like that's such a big thing that's just not there anymore. Because a person who's kind is always going to be kind. They're going to be kind with you when you're up, when you're down when you guys are, are not getting along, when there's a fight, or even when the relationship is done, they're going to be kind enough to say, I feel like I, I don't think we can continue. They're not going to just start acting out and then start seeing somebody else yeah. or get married in two months and then you realize I'm dating someone who's getting married next week. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. that's not a kind person. Yeah. A kind person is going to tell you that, you know what, I actually met somebody else so I can't actually keep doing this to this person it's not fair yeah so i feel like that's such a big thing that's really not there anymore 